Hey guys, I'm Jello Gonzalez and we're back here for another gadget review. This time we're taking a look at the Oppo Reno 10X Zoom. It's Oppo's newest flagship. So just a year ago, Oppo launched its Find X flagship, which was then known for its uh, full screen display, uh, which was then a rarity, and its uh, sliding body. And also a price tag that surprised many of the Oppo faithful. It was priced at 50,000 pesos, which at that point was a price point that was reserved more for the iPhones and the Samsung Galaxy phones. It was kind of unusual to see an Oppo phone that priced that high because back then Oppo was known for its cheaper uh, budget phones. Even Huawei at that time was still just getting comfortable at that price range. Not to knock on the Find X, the Find X is a fine phone. Uh, it was simply the case that a 50,000 Oppo phone was kind of unheard of at that point. This was a brand that built its reputation on inexpensive phones that capitalized on Filipinos' love for selfies and was endorsed by a host of mainstream celebrities, probably the most high profile of whom was Sarah Geronimo. The leap felt just a little bit sudden. At the time, it felt like the Find X was more of a stage setter than anything, an Oppo proof of concept flagship that wanted to prove that the brand could also make a premium device beyond its usual offering of budget devices and uh, it was a proof of concept more than a real sales superstar. But that's where we were wrong. Because a year since then, the Find X has proven to be both. It proved that uh, the brand could make a legit uh, flagship and uh, it sold well. It sold well at least in its native China and the storily warmed up the stage for its successor, the Oppo Reno 10X Zoom. A year since the Find X, we have the Reno 10X Zoom, which is just an Oppo phone that just feels more at ease even with the hefty price tag of 46,000 pesos. For observers, it doesn't feel as strange that we have an Oppo phone this expensive. A number of design cues and key features back up my sentiment. The back has this beautiful frosted glass finish which feels a little more reserved, a little more sophisticated than the bold, deep neon vibe of the Find X. It simply doesn't call for as much attention as the Find X. And I believe that shows some added maturity and confidence from the brand. There's also no camera bump as the camera array is built within the curved body of the phone, adding to its sophistication. And at the bottom of the array is a tiny round silver knob that lifts the phone just a bit so as to avoid scratches when you're placing the phone on a surface. I think that's a nifty design feature. This knob has a green outline and it's likely the same shade of green in the new Oppo logo which is now using a much darker shade of green as opposed to its older logo. The power button has a line in the same green as well and uh, you know these are tiny design cues that give the phone a pop of personality without being too loud. It's a nice flavor, it's nice to look at. And to that note, a small strip of text runs on the back of the phone showing the Oppo logo and, uh, and the words designed by Oppo, which I feel like it's a nice touch. It's a nice addition to the overall design. Now, one of the more distinctive uh, design features of the phone is the shark fin pop-up camera. It's the housing that the phone uses for the, for the camera and when it pops up, it looks like a shark fin. Felt a little bit weird and gimmicky at first, but it's grown on me quickly. The more common box pop-up selfie camera, which uh, you'll find on most uh, full-screen phones, just never really felt elegant to me. So credit Oppo for going with this uncommon asymmetrical implementation that, uh, for the lack of a better word, just feels a little bit more cool. All in all, it's a strong, sophisticated design befitting of a premium line, and it just shows you how much Oppo has matured uh, from a design standpoint, coming from the Find X. Specs-wise, you'd find the numbers you'd expect for a phone that costs 46,000 pesos. Here's a quick rundown. It's got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 chipset, 8GB of RAM, 256GB of storage, a 6.6-inch Full HD Plus AMOLED display, a battery rated at 4,065 mAh, a triple camera system made up of a 48 megapixel main shooter plus an 8 megapixel wide angle camera plus a 13 megapixel telephoto 10 times hybrid zoom 60 times digital zoom a 16 megapixel pop-up front camera vuk 3 fast charging a triple cooling system to prevent overheating and dolby atmos speakers with audio 3d the phone star feature though is its camera systems zooming capabilities on the top of the camera array is a standard angle lens, 
an ultra wide at the middle and a telephoto at the bottom that's five times the standard. These are essentially three fixed angle lenses that use software to zoom in digitally. Although it must be said that the software is good enough that it actually behaves like a real zoom lens, transitioning seamlessly from one lens to another. The zooming system is not really all that different from the multi-camera phone implementations right now in the market. But the big difference here is that you have a lens that's already zoomed in at five times the standard. This means that the phone has a lens that has a fixed angle that's already more zoomed in than any other phone out there beyond the Huawei P30 Pro. So with a zoomed in starting point, the software has to work a little bit less in preventing the degradation usually associated with digitally assisted zooming, as opposed to starting on a standard angle lens. This is especially great when you really want to get close to the subject. And this phone gets really, 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 really close. Translation, the phone just takes really good photos of really far objects. It would have been unprecedented if not for the Huawei P30 Pro which came months before it. But Oppo's 5X lens does have a few advantages over the Huawei P30 Pro. Oppo's 5X lens has the bigger aperture at f3.0 while the Huawei P30 Pro has uh, an aperture of f3.4. The bigger aperture means more light gets to come in and it to illuminate the subject. The Reno 10X zoom also has the bigger telephoto sensor of 13 megapixels, while the P30 Pro's is uh, 8 megapixels. The Reno also has a longer digital zoom at uh, 60x, while the P30 Pro has a 50x digital zoom. Although, good luck with the quality of your photo at those uh, zoom levels. And uh, one must know that the Huawei P30 Pro has been getting better reviews uh, in terms of uh, stabilization at those zoom levels. The, the P30 Pro wowed with its zoom, and uh, the Reno 10X zoom pretty much does the same. It's pretty insane how close you can get to the subject with these phones. That no other phone zooms in like these two, and with the uncertainty that's currently surrounding uh, its rival Huawei, should give the phone considerable appeal among consumers. That's why the timing of the 10X Zoom's release and the Fine X setting the stage for it a year ago couldn't have been better for the brand. All in all, Oppo nails the premium experience with the Reno 10X Zoom. And it gives it a potent weapon in a phone race that hasn't been this wide open in years. It's a great phone for the brand and it's a pretty exciting phone for consumers too if you have 46,000 pesos. So that's our take on the Oppo Reno 10X Zoom. Uh, once again, this has been Jello Gonzalez. Uh, thanks for tuning in and see you next time.